They say positive stuff to me as you guys say negative stuff, all right? Go. Yeah, now you say negative stuff as they're saying positive stuff. Oh, you look so cheerful. Oh, yeah. yeah. The great chart. Yeah. It was such a Uh-huh. That's actually what you've been taught. You know what that means? You take sides. Because you know what that means? I'm willing to be open to you guys and love you and really be warm to you, but I'm not willing to do that to you guys because you guys are negative. One of the things I have to learn is, so what if people are positive? Honestly, so what? So what if people are negative? That's just the way that they're going to be. I don't have to close myself off to this negative person and be open to this person because of fear of being unsafe. I don't have to do that. I can actually just stay like this and accept both worlds. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a physical stillness meditation. Why is this so important, physical stillness? is because if you just sit there <clears throat> for a moment and just notice how much you move, you're going to notice until you become aware, you actually fidget. Your eyes move very rapidly. You're constantly readjusting. None of this is actually needed. The reason why it's not actually needed is because there's no readjusting to the point where you're going to be so comfortable where you're at, where you don't have to readjust again. This is just a symptom of how you actually treat your life. You're always readjusting your life to be perfect. It's crazy when you think about that because you go, really? And I go, yes. The way you treat your body, the way you do things, the way you fidget, also the way you do it in life. Same way. No difference. So what we're going to do right now is that we're going to do a physical meditation, physical stillness meditation, because once you allow yourself physical stillness, you're going to start to have more clarity, more vision, more awareness, And with that, you're going to be able to see. If there's one thing that I only am interested in teaching you, is seeing more. Because when you can see more, you're going to be able to change in the way that you want to. Yes, you've come here because you want guidance from me. That's great. But my vision is based on what I've seen within myself. I've gained clarity on the things that I've seen because I've been able to step back more. But you have the chance to do that within yourself. I'm not here to give you an answer so you can go away and latch on to that as certainty. I'm here to just guide you to be able to see something. Because once you see, now you have the choice to change. So everybody, looks like you are. Make sure that you're upright in your chair. Your back is upright. Close your eyes. Now I want you to remain physically still. Remain physically still to the point where you feel like you're immovable. And just notice what happens, what wonders, what sensation arises that you want to react to.
the key is to allow yourself to, even while your eyes are open, to remain undisturbed. That clear space, you can look at me now, that clear space, that undisturbed space you guys feel internally, you can actually continue that with your eyes open as you're interacting with others, as you're interacting with the world, things, the trees. You don't actually have to let your mind wander. You can simply just enjoy what it feels like to be in the clear space. As I speak now and you remain clear space, you actually forget that you are there. You are so much with me that you'll forget. This is what it means to really be in clear space, to forget yourself. You actually become the space. Awareness. Allow this physical meditation to teach you. Once you know what it's like to be physically still while you're in the clear space, while you're interacting with the world, with others, you're then going to understand what does it mean to really be who I am. It's easy to do like this. But the moment you open your eyes and there's a chance for you to lose yourself, this is when it becomes difficult. That's why some people, they feel great actually. When they're just alone, nobody's around, they could just be in the clear space, enjoy it. The moment that people come around, the moment that someone comes around, they then go, okay, this person's acting like this. I shouldn't be around people like this. Now this track starts. Who is this person? Fuck, I feel so scared. Why do I feel fear? Now the mind starts going. Learning about clear space means that you allow yourself to forget yourself when you're in front of someone. When you're here with me, feel free to forget yourself. You don't need it. I'm just interesting, interested in talking to you, giving you the chance to be guided. That's it. I don't sit here as someone with answers. I sit here with someone with vision. And I want to give you more vision. That's it. I want you to stop caring about if you like that someone acts a certain way. You judge and that keeps you at a distance actually. If you guys want to know, one of the strongest things that will keep us at a distance is judging. Because when you're judging, you're able to control. You're able to look at a distance and go, okay, no, okay, yes, okay, no. And you hold that distance like this until you go, oh, okay, there's somebody who shows to be something that I approve of. So you're actually filtering the world through approval and non-approval. This person is approved of me, this person is not approved of me. To actually be close is to approve of all. You can't take sides. Going, I don't like this thing about the person, immediately in that moment you take a side.
Who like people who are negative? Do you like people who are negative? No. Do anybody here like people who are negative? Do you guys know that calling someone negative is a judgment? So in the very moment you say this person is negative, it's a judgment. Do you know that once you start being positive, you're going to be like, okay, this person is positive, I want to hang out with them. You will start that because your judgment is now, I'll only hang out with people who are like this. Remember I told you, you can't take sides. So you start taking sides like, all right, I want the positive people. Yeah, man, you, you're having a hard time in life? Just understand that you can be calm, you can do this. You're like, I want to hang out with that person. Then you're walking down the street or maybe you in some situation, you meet a person and they're like, oh, everybody in here is just so fucking stupid. And they start talking like this, you're like, oh, I don't want to be around that. And then you see someone you know, maybe they're positive, you go to them and you start to feel comfort. Positivity, negativity are both judgments. People are always trying to go be around people who are positive. Be around people who don't talk down on others. And I'm not saying be around people who do talk down on others, but I'm just giving you exactly what happens. Be around people who share your interest. People who are like you. People who meditate, etc., etc., etc. But what they don't know is saying be around positive people immediately eliminates anybody who could be perceived as negative. Perceived as negative. So that means you actually come into a lane where you're only around positivity, but you don't see the other side of life. You're one-sided. Why are you drawn to darkness? Because there's a part of yourself that wants to show itself to you. There's a part of others that you also are curious about because it matches something inside of yourself that resonates with that actually. Anybody who say I'm positive, you must also say that you're negative because they need to negate each other. If you want to live life the way that life is, you need to allow both sides to be there. So why are you so distant? Because you take sides. I don't care about being, I don't care about being around people who are positive. I don't care about it. <coughs> I don't care about if you guys are positive or negative. That's not my interest. My interest is the thing that brought you here. That's what I'm interested in. There's a part of you that brought you to me. It wasn't the positive part that brought you to me. Because now you're starting to break yourself in two. The positive part of me is the one that's living now. But I'm like, what about the negative part? I don't have negativity. I don't like being around that. Do you have something in relation yeah. to this? Uh huh. Uh, can you go into a bit detail of what means positive and what is negative? That only means it to you. So, let's just throw some things out, okay? Let's have a positive and negative moment, okay? Say just some positive statements to me. It was great. Huh? It was great. Thanks, man. You're the best coach. <laughs> You're like a brother. A brother? Yeah. <laughs> older, older, brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adorable. Adorable? Thanks. <laughs> I want to hear one from you. Thanks, man. Okay, now say some negative statements to me. You're full of shit. Fuck you. <laughs> what? Full of what? Full of shit. Fuck you. 
What? Something else negative. Talk about my, I actually put on some pounds here. Talk about this. <laughs> I'm what? <laughs> you know that I'm balding? Yeah. 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 Look. Oh, yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to talk to you, you'd be so bad, <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I don't, I don't care what you're talking about. All right, now. Of course, there was still playfulness in that. But as you give me positivity and negativity, I can choose sides, actually. Let's say that you, this half over here called me positive things, and this half called me negative things. What the world teaches you is to do this. So this, this, and this. All right, say, say positive stuff to me as you guys say negative stuff. All right, go. Yeah, now you say negative stuff as they're saying positive stuff. Oh, you look so cheerful. Oh, yeah. yeah. The great chart. Yeah. You're such a good person. Uh-huh. I just smile. What's that? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh-huh. That's actually what you've been taught. You know what that means? You take sides. Because you know what that means? I'm willing to be open to you guys and love you and really be warm to you, but I'm not willing to do that to you guys because you guys are negative. Not knowing that you have inside of you exactly what you have, you have inside of you exactly what you have. There's no difference. It's not like only being around people like the guy you met the other day is going to teach you compassion. What's really going to teach you compassion is being open to everyone. Compassion is the deepest thing you could feel because it goes beyond taking sides. It goes beyond it. Do you understand when someone is quote unquote negative? Do you understand that? Have you ever been negative to yourself? Of course. Do you, do you understand them? So you do understand negativity? Yes. Do you also enjoy being around people who are willing to be positive? Yes, of course. No. If you really want to understand how you can you close the distance, accept both. One of the things I have to learn is, so what if people are positive? Honestly, so what? So what if people are negative? That's just the way that they're going to be. I don't have to close myself off to this negative person and be open to this person because of fear of being unsafe. I don't have to do that. I can actually just stay like this and accept both worlds. And what does this really mean? You need to explore the part of yourself that one would call negative. The darkness that you find yourself drawn to in others is because you need to explore it in yourself. Because whatever you do like this to, <coughs> it'll stay there. Start exploring the part of yourself that feels heavy, not accepted actually by your positive psyche. Start exploring it. And what do I mean explore? Start to live out consciously some of these things that you're afraid of. What is a negative thing you're afraid of actually acting out? Just like you. Yeah. You met a girl that's like you. It's perfect. Why leave her? You're seeking someone who can support your judgment of what's, what it should be there. Yeah. yeah, you were with the perfect girl, actually. Did you stop talking to her? But I'm saying you guys haven't met up and slept together and hung out. You haven't done it? Afterwards. Hmm? Not afterwards. I mean, I've met her in cafe, so, but I have not slept with her since. Okay. 
that was a perfect girl for you. She really was. You met somebody who was just like you. Have you, have you stopped being as judgmental when you left her? Have you stopped being as judgmental as when you met her? I then you, she was the perfect girl. It may not seem like it. It may seem like, uh, maybe I should just choose somebody else who's a little bit more open, who could be supportive of me and who won't feel so skeptical of what I'm doing and then challenge it and everything like that. And I go, yeah, you can say that. But we always attract exactly what we give out. Always. So even if you met another girl who was open, perceived even to be open to, than her, you would actually draw parts out of her that would replicate the last girl. Because you said you didn't change that much. So that means you're going to continue to draw the same thing out of women. It's, an, it's when you stop judging, when you loosen on judging that you'll be able to attract someone else or attract something different out of a woman. Because you were going from the position of she would be skeptical, she wouldn't like this. Did you actually have that talk with her or did you make that from a distance, that choice? Well, we talked afterwards. After you broke up. But I'm talking about during the time. Did you have a conversation with her about, you know, I have a feeling that you could be not supportive of this and very skeptical of what I'm doing? No. I guess I brought it up, but it was not like a discussion. It was like what? It was more like a complaint. Yeah. Critical, right? Critical. Yeah. Didn't you say she was critical? just like you. She was the perfect girl, bro. She was. She still is right now. Now, if you loosen up on judging, you can then, you actually can try it again to let you know. If you really liked her, you can try it again. But if you go into the situation being less judgmental, you're going to actually see the truth. Because the moment that you shift and change, the person across from you is forced to shift and change in some way. Let's say that two people are together and both are very, very jealous. Why did you look at her? I didn't. Well, you think he has big muscles? Imagine if it was just like this all the time. If one person stops being jealous, the other is forced to stop being jealous. Because then you're no longer a match. A jealous person can never be with a person who's not jealous. If they are, they'll invoke jealousy out of the other person, if the person is not. This is why any guy who's really jealous, I go, you need a jealous girl, man. That's the best thing for you. When you get a jealous girl, stay with her, because she's going to be the best girl for you. If a guy is very loving and warm and open and he's like, oh, fuck, I'm just so, he needs a girl who's like, he needs a girl who's like that as well. You always attract that, though. So what do I say to you? I say, she's perfect for you. She is. Whether you like it or not, she actually is, man. I think you should give her another chance if that's a possibility. I think you should. If it's not, that's fine. Then you can move on. But I always want you to understand that the moment I go from a distance and I go, this girl's like this, she's going to be critical, She's not going to like this, and this and this. Who is saying that? The critical one is saying that. The one that's judging is saying that. If you just saw clearly, you'll be like, okay, this is girl is too judgmental. I don't want to be with her. It would be clear. It would be no ambiguity. It would just totally be clear. Like, this is not the place for me to be, simply. And if I stay here any longer, it's not good. But if it's from the place of she's judgmental, she's like this, that's not even clear. That's coming from the part of yourself that's also judgmental and critical. 
So it's better actually to say th these things to a woman that I'm a little bit suspicious or I feel that you can become critical or anything like this and see how does the woman actually respond to this. This is now moving into how do I actually be with a woman? It's not just about adventure, we have sex, we do great things. It's not just simply about that. That's the part of the experience with the woman that's like the adventurous part. The part where you guys are doing things. The part where you can play video game called Outlast that me and her play sometimes. That's the, the, the part of it that you can really enjoy. But what about the part of just sitting in front of each other, not doing anything and just being there? What about the part of, I feel like this and I'm scared of you seeing this? What about this part? What about the, I have to be honest with you, I feel like you are judgmental and this. She's like, I feel like you're judgmental too. You could just say, basically we can see we both are judgmental. Because she's following your lead to let you know. Anytime the masculine and the feminine is present to each other, the feminine will naturally yield and follow the masculine's lead. So if you go, we shouldn't be together and this, this, and this, she may, <laughs> she may do that, but she'll eventually just go, this is just the way that it is. I'll follow his lead. She won't consciously do that, but that'll be her natural reaction to it. 